Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Simeon Papaelius, and we're going to be talking all about creating opportunity. This is one of my favorite subjects in the real estate investing space. I'm so excited that Simeon's here to share his knowledge with us. Before we get into it with Simeon, if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. You can also hit the notification bell and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's do this. Simeon, thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy day. I know you're a busy guy. I can even hear work going on in the background. You're at the office. There's always something cooking at REC Canada. Um, but thanks so much for taking some time to, to uh, speak to me and my audience. Before we jump in, just give me a bit of a you know, 50,000 foot view of what you do in the real estate investing space. Well, first and foremost, uh, I just want to say good afternoon to you and thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Um, from my perspective, uh, again, uh, it's I've been at the helm of, uh, of the REC uh, group of companies with my partner, Jazz, uh, for 15 years. Uh, and we started out in residential real estate. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, slowly and surely, uh, as, our, as our insight and our uh, value proposition was gaining uh, traction, uh, we slowly started expanding on that and giving that to our clients to where now we have over 10,000 um, investors uh, that, that, that follow us uh, and, uh, and, and take our advice on a day-to-day -day basis. And we've probably created over a billion uh, dollars uh, in net worth to our client base. Uh, and that's factual. Right? We transact mm -hmm. 700 transactions a year, uh, over half a billion sales volume. So we're very uh, large. We're actually Canada's biggest uh, investment focused team. We're actually Canada's uh, number one team in, in number of transactions across the biggest company in real estate, which is Royal Page uh, in this country. Um, so that's kind of how we made it up here. Uh, and of course, our guiding principle in light is um, world class service to our clients. So let's start there. How, how do you go about finding new opportunities um, for, for you and, and your business and for your clients? Let's talk about you reaching out to me saying, Simeon, I need a couple of properties. I have investors lined up. I need one for three months out, one for six months out. Okay, Darren. So now we need to find markets. Have you already identified any nodes of opportunity? A node is a location. Have we identified a geographical region that we may be able to exploit the market of current offerings by building something better, faster, stronger? Hmm. Is that the way? Is it something that we find existing in change? Is it so we're going to look for key market indicators? So in order to build, and let's just use a 12 plex. We want to build a 12 plex. We have to understand who lives in 12 plexes. Have we ever seen a 12 plex? <laughs> what does a 12 plex look like that was built in the 60s? What does a 12 plex look like built brand new today? Hmm. Major differences. Yeah. Where is the said area? So once we identify who lives in such a building, because a 12 plex is the unique boutique building. If we're talking about the city of Toronto, the tenant who will rent in a 12 plex is not the same guy who's going to be on the 42nd floor of a condo. Yeah. The 12 plex uh, tenant does not want to be part of a 700 people building. They don't like it. They don't want an elevator. They might need an elevator, whatever, but they don't want the congestion, the anonymity that comes with a condo. Mm -hmm. They want to feel close to the ground. They may own a car. They may want to be able to drive in, drive out, access their unit, almost like a house with less maintenance. What is the demographic pain? So for us to create an opportunity, there's a set of data that we need. Hmm. How do we find it? How do we analyze it? Who is our tenant? Our tenant looks like Darren. Our, ter our tenant looks like Simeon. Our tenant looks like Vanessa. How much does Vanessa make? I need to know. Is Vanessa typically married? Is she typically single? Does she typically own a dog? What facilities do we need to accommodate to make it a desirable building? So now the recipe is slowly coming together. Mm. Where is this located? All the best ones that I've ever seen, Darren, are close to a subway line. All the best ones I've seen, Darren, are close to a plaza, a major employer, a bus terminal. I don't know, the harbor. It depends where you're looking to go. 
So if you've identified, for example, an area that is underserviced, where uh, the vacancy rate of, let's call it St. Catharines or Barry, let's call it Barry. Let's work on Barry right now. Mm -hmm. Vacancy is one percent. Who thinks they need more apartment buildings? Everybody does. Mm -hmm which is why everybody is building in Barrie. Mm -hmm. Barrie is a market that's been busting at the seams for the last decade. It's projected to continue to do so. Will it continue to go do so at the same rate? Probably not. Why? Because land has skyrocketed in Barrie. So that same land that you would have bought five years ago for a million is now 2.2 million. That cuts into the economics, that cuts into the pro forma, that cuts into the margin. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we've talked a little bit about how to identify nodes. So look at, look at the absorption rate, look at the vacancy rate, look at the employment indexes. All these things can be found readily on that amazing application we call Google. Everybody has access to it. You don't need to be a pro. Mm -hmm. Go to the Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation, go to Collier's, go to CBRE. These are all commercial houses that pay MBAs to create reports on factual data from the market. They put them out quarterly, the multifamily report, the retirement home report, the residential report, the new condo report. Any sector that you may want to invest in has data attached to it by the best minds on the planet. How do you then analyze an opportunity to say, break it down uh, you know is that something that you do relatively quickly on a high level or do you really get into the minutia of saying okay now i'm going to dive into numbers 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 to make sure that it works or do you have some sort of you know trick that you use to say this opportunity is worth having a second look at or this one is not even worth um, my time yeah so, so I'll, I'll give you i'll give you I'll, I'll say two things first and foremost so the the thing that i do best is involve people smarter than me. So, so there is nothing more powerful and more important than building your team. If there's one thing you take from today is the power of that team that you surround yourself with. Figure out where you want to go. Let's say you have a half a million bucks. You need to speak to someone who's going to tell you for the half a million bucks, the best thing to do is this and this opportunity because you can double it. Or you want to take it slow because you're so conservative. Take 100 here, 100 here, and 100 here. Diversify it three ways, three different markets, three different asset classes. The, the, the chances of you failing at everything is now slim to none. So worst case scenario, pick one aggressive, one middle of the road, and one completely low risk with smaller returns. I have never run out of opportunity there in 16 years. Never. And I never will run out of opportunity because an opportunity is only good if it works for you. That alone, you know, that, that last part that you said, there's always opportunity is something that I feel as real estate investors, especially in these heightened market conditions that we're seeing right now, there is this scarcity mindset that it's like, if I don't get this opportunity, that this is the last great opportunity that's left uh, in the marketplace. And that, that just absolutely, absolutely isn't true. And you lose all your negotiating power. And so, I, I've, I've seen you and Jazz do this time and time again, right? It's like, this is, our, this is our scenario. This is our number. This is our term. If you don't like it, cool. We'll go find something else. And I think obviously that comes with experience, yeah. but um, it is something where I think people get too emotionally wrapped up in real estate sometimes, and they don't look at it from all the perspectives you just said around the numbers and the opportunity and, and, and truly doing your due diligence fully in order to be able to understand the opportunity. From someone who sole purpose in, in my career life is to find opportunity for all my clients, I can tell you with absolute confidence that you will never be out of opportunity, mm. ever. And if you think you missed the greatest deal of all time, who cares? If the universe at the end of the day didn't want you to have it, bro, move on. Mm. Something would have happened anyways. Trust mm. me. Trust <laughs> me. Trust <laughs> me. You want to have exactly. the time to analyze. You want to have the time to, to, to find yourself within it, to imagine it, to visualize it. I'm not telling anybody to blow pipe by deals for no reason. Tie mm -hmm. up your deal, then do your due diligence. Don't let anyone 
force you through due diligence. There's no yeah. bigger mistake. Nobody owns you. It's your money. Absolutely. It's your risk. It's your life. Mm. And it's and unless you value it, if you succumb to people's pressure and nonsense, no, you get 30 days and that's it. Well, if at day 29, you're not satisfied, you need an extension. And if they want to pull the opportunity back, well, beat it. Mm -hmm. Take your property back and move on. Um, we've talked a little bit about, you know, finding those opportunities. We talked about, you know, how you analyze the opportunity. And I want to kind of finish up with how do you mitigate that risk? You guys are doing a, a ton of uh, opportunities and a ton of deals. How do you mitigate risk? Uh, I know it's a broad question, but maybe break it down it, into a specific not. opportunity or, or how do you just mitigate risk in general? So, so it's research, research, research. Mm -hmm. So, so risk only exists if you don't know it's there. Th yeah. Think of the nature of risk. Mm -hmm. The nature of risk in mitigating for it is to do as much research as possible to have all possible scenarios covered. And then at the end, we still have a contingency for the unknowns, meaning that even if I know everything and my plan is perfect, what if I break my arm? If I'm the lead contractor and I can't swing the hammer, what does that cost? So from a high level, it's research. If you know the market you're going into is growing, if you know the market you're going into is absorbing, it's no vacancy, it's this, that, and the other. We're talking about real estate investing. So yeah. go through all your key metrics. You know the market is safe. Now you need to find either the asset class or the type of building you want to get into. Have you done it before? Yes, great. Take your experience. How does it apply to this market? You've never done it before? Stop. Speak to somebody who has done it before in the said market. Mm -hmm. If you don't know anyone, join the other small app, the Facebook, the Instagram, the Google, the Moogle. There's communities everywhere. Mm. You have a Ford Mustang, you'll find 6 million people with the, on the Ford Forum. You want to go to an investor forum? 5 million people sharing their insight. Because people give. That's what people do. Good people give. Yeah. Bad people take. Mm. So if you are somebody, again, how do you mitigate risk? Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. You know what to worry about. You know that you need, in a, in a market like Tilsonburg, I need three-month lease-up time. So mm -hmm. as I'm finishing the drywall, and I know I'm three months from completion, I'm going to put four lease signs up. Yeah. I just mitigated three months of cash flow negative. I can give you a million small things, but they're all tied to the same thing. Knowing the market that you're operating in or working with people who know the market that you want to operate in. I don't want to make anybody think that this is complex because it's not, but it's not funny. It's not light. It is all your money and everything that brought you to your life to this point is at stake. Mm -hmm. and just because you're using other people's money doesn't mean the risk is less because it's somebody's money. Mm -hmm. So I, I find it's more of when it's other people's money. I, I'm more, I'm more diligent. I'm more aware. I'm more um, stressed, if you will, if I'm using somebody else's capital, right? So, and and I think that's what makes a good investment partner is when they feel that heightened sense of uh, responsibility when it's other people's money. I couldn't agree with you more, my man. I want to ask you one final question, and that is. What is your best piece of advice, you know, for investors getting into the real estate investing space uh, for the first time? And I think you hit on it earlier, which I thought was a perfect point. You don't, the problem with risk is it's, it's what you don't know is what's going to kill you. Right. And so how is it that, what, what are you giving in terms of advice for first time investors getting into the market right now? Where's the first step and, and where's the, who's the first person you put on your team in order to mitigate that risk? Here's the recipe. Invest in yourself. You're a new investor. First, invest in yourself. Six months to a year minimum before you touch a property. Mm. Number two, build your team. Build your team. Get yourself a quarterback, the broker. Get yourself a mortgage broker, the other quarterback. Make sure that the two are in sync. The mortgage broker and the broker should know everything about you. If you don't yep. trust them to tell them everything about you, it's the wrong people. Mm. So they, they're representing your interests. And what they do is going to affect you in every way of your life. If you don't know a great real estate lawyer to do the due diligence with or an accountant, what are the tax implications? What am I, what am I supposed to do? So 
education first, six to 12 months. Start building your power team, at least three months of sourcing, getting referrals from people who are successful. Who did you work with, et cetera? Put your team together. That mm -hmm. mitigates about a billion of the risk. Yeah. A billion by working with the right people. Lastly, mm -hmm. do not spend more than you have. Do mm -hmm. not put yourself in a compromised position where you're going to be at a disadvantage for the next five years. You want to stay strong. You want to stay on top. You're not impressing anyone. Nobody can impress me with their real estate portfolio because I literally know so many billionaires. Yeah. What, you own one more property? Don't do it to impress me. Don't buy a property that's a bit more because it's a bit nicer and people will think that you're a better investor. Always look at your own goals and your own mandate through your own glasses for your own reasons. Don't compare yourself to other people. Stay humble, stay focused, and, and really work with the right team. That's, that's my advice to any newbie. Amazing advice. Uh, and, and so, so thorough and so backed by so many years of experience in this space. Simeon, I can't thank you enough for uh, your time today and sharing your knowledge uh, with me and my audience. Um, we could sit here and chat for, for five, six yes, hours. We'll have to do that over uh, some, some beverages now that we're allowed to here in the city yes. of Toronto as a, as a Friday. And I know you've just opened up a brand new restaurant. Uh, you know what, why don't you tell everyone what that is? And, uh, cause I'd love to be able to support you outside of the real estate investing space. Cause I know it's been a tough, tough, tough year for restaurateurs. Uh, so, you know, let sure me, has. tell me, yeah, tell me what your, uh, your new place is called. Uh, yeah. So, uh, myself and again, a partner, um, started uh, Kibo, uh, secret garden. It's, um, it's a luxury sushi omakase bar, uh, in, in Toronto's Yorkville district. For those outside the city, it's kind of in the heart of the city, um, a little, it's a little enclave of, of a few streets, kind of, kind of the higher end of the city. So it's, um, it's a really beautiful place. Uh, it was, the deal was done in January of 2020 <laughs> and we closed on March 5th, 2020. <laughs> so as everybody knows, March 16th, the world got shut down. So 10 days after closing and there's no options. And, and this is the thing, like when I talk contingency, when people want to talk risk, th there's things that you can account for. And then there's things that you could never possibly, the science fiction reality that we've been living for the last mm. year and a half, that it is what it is. And, and thankfully my partner is uh, thir th owns 35 restaurants at this point. So he's well capitalized. I'm very blessed in the real estate business, so I'm well capitalized. So we can endure this this time, uh, and we accounted for it. We're both very experienced uh, businessmen in both hospitality. I used to have a background in it; that's why I'm in it. Mm -hmm. But we still had to carry losses; like it's not a joke. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. um, it, and we'll be fine. Uh, but we are reopening uh, for to your entire audience. The invitations out there. Mention my name uh, if you're from the city of Toronto. Swing by; uh, they'll definitely. Uh, give you the the royal treatment and it will be an experience so if you are if you love Japanese if you like sushi uh, this is arguably of course I'm a little biased but it's it is the best sushi I've ever had um, and I'm a professional uh, eater outer <laughs> so so I, I I entertain clients for a living so uh, I haven't yeah. had uh, I've eaten everywhere and everything uh, and this is some of the best I've ever had so I strongly recommend uh, to swing by feel free and uh, swing by if I'm yeah. there uh, drinks on me. So, yeah, I was part of the grand opening and it was, you're, you're right. It is, it's amazing food. And uh, the whole team there was just took such good care of us. So, so thanks for, for inviting me to that. Um, Simeon, again, thanks so much for your time today. Um, I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. Although I don't need to really do that. You guys are, are killing it and, and have just been tops in your, in your industry for, for many, many years. But uh, thanks again for, for the time today. Um, and I look forward to when we can, you know, be together in person and, and uh, share some, 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 some stories and some laughs and, uh, and some beverages and some sushi. <laughs> I, I look forward to it as well, my friend. Thank you for having me. I wish every single person out there all the best. Stay safe, stay productive uh, and, and stay relevant. Uh, keep educating yourself and keep watching shows just like this. This is what you need to do. Not to be a value. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Thanks.